Okay, so um, growing up, I know uh, you had told me before you grew up with Lil Kiki, and how did you run across them, and how you meet all right, uh, now Big Punk and all them? This is where the Wiz Riz come in at. When I was on the Riz, like I've been on the Riz since, you could say, 86. My brother had his own apartment over there in Brandon Chase, which is Ashley Park. Mm. Or the heads or something now behind the stove. Mm. So I used to always like to spend time with my brother on the weekends because he going to give me basically anything. And he had a lot of dressing style he had me up on. Mm. But it was just like so low key until I was like, okay, I'm doing he giving me tight clothes because the shit he gave me expensive than a motherfucker. Mm. That shit my mama buy me like gifts. My daddy will buy me Levi's. So I was like, fuck that. I'm finna go hang with my brother. Know what and, I mean? And at the time, I'm guessing, you know, he was in the streets or whatever. So is that uh, your first time getting acclimated to the streets or learning what the street gang was? See, I liked the streets because, okay, my brother moved out of there like in 86. Don't hold me to it too, big brother. Mm -hmm. He moved out of there like in. He stayed over there probably like two years and moved in. He moved to Sharpstown. By Sharpstown Mile, Clarewood. So we stayed over there about three years. He moved to right behind the mile. So now I love going to his house on the weekend, every weekend, because I can walk to Sharpstown. Mm. But of course, I got two nephews, Shock and Rock. They like four years up under me and, and, and one, three. So they started coming through and want to go with me. And I like, damn, because the weekends of my time, I go over there to go to the lobby. Mm. Cause the library was right there, then across the street was Sharpstown Mall. So by me having C's and shit on my court, my brother was like, look, be smart, you know, go do your studies, go do this, you know, the little black box in the corner. And I ain't gonna lie, that was kind of bringing me up to a question. I was gonna say like, what? how was it growing up in the home you was living in? Like, how was it? My house was so cool to us, uh, shit. My parents were down there fighting when they had me, so. They was with whatever, and to this day, like, I jump in the bed with my mama on some shit, because my mom and dad gave me all the game I got. Like, I didn't get no game from no street niggas. Like, so, saying. back then, was your house considered to be, like, the kicking house? People can come through, kick Because my mama liked this sport. See, my house was kicking because my mama was more tone boys, and she liked the sports, right? Mm. So her brothers was like G them niggas. Yeah, get your chill. So it's like this here. By her being a G up mama and, and they had me at an old age, she was showing me she liked basketball mostly, football, whatever kind of sport. So with the sports thing going, her brothers would come through their brain, build their cook all the time. All of them work, you know, in the in the say my uncles all majority Worked as mechanics, and, and my mom and them, I was cooks at school, but my mama worked with nuns at so, St. Dominique. So, at the end of the day, you would say you had a pretty good household or upbringing or something like that? To that I effect. had an overprivileged, I had a privileged life that I didn't like, because I see people why, like... Why you ain't like it? What you mean by that? Because it is. Because the people I went to school with would be doing bad, and I know I can go ask my dad for anything. He, one person never turned me down, wrist piece Joe Taylor. He never turned me down, nothing, nor my mama. Like, I was a nigga in high school at Ballet, I getting a fucking allowance. Okay, and so I how, how did that transfer, or how did you transfer into the streets if you was having a, uh, a pretty good, decent upbringing? Because most people, I'm sure that's around you, being that you came from Third Ward, all the way to West Ridge, I'm quite sure that it was people around you who had, uh, most of the people had single parent house home, no dads in the highs. I'm quite sure a lot of them wasn't getting And that's allowance. what it was. Like, like how, uh, how was that? Man, I had a partner. He, I ain't going to say his name, but him and his two sisters, they were real poor. As little kids, this was 90. These exact shoes was out. And, and, and 90, I had some real ones, all real flights. Because I ain't never liked Jordan. You know, Jordan was all right, but he cheated all okay. the time to me. I really ain't cook for him, so... I wore flights, I wore everything around Jordan, but when Jordan was clean, I'd give me a pair. So the the dude, he really ain't had no clothes in the elementary. We going to Lockhart, a Jewish elementary. So uh, 
he ain't had no clothes, so. He just really like having his sister was so cute. He had two sisters. He had a older sister that, that wore glasses, and he had a younger sister, but his mama, like, was a regular mama single parent, so I knew the big-time drug dealer in the hood. He was cool with me. He'd give me quarters every day. Let me ride to Francis with him. All the big niggas, he'll tell them, leave me alone and don't fuck with him. For some reason, I don't know, and this was a Mexican, Migo, doing 75, I love you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so at what point did you actually get, like, in the street? What was the first thing that you... That's what you... I'm telling you. In 90s, say, i come play games. So the Chinamen, they, they used to be smoking or doing something, but they had money and stuff. At night, they'll let me stay in the store when they clean the store or whatever they bring it down, bring the ramp down, whatever it was. They'll put all the hustlers up out that bitch and I'll have free critics on every game for 30 minutes. I'll mop the store in there with my job at 12. So when I seen what they were finally doing, I ain't gonna see it on tape because I love them sophomore niggas, 37 and love them. Whatever they had going on, it was real shit going like, say, it's time ghetto boys is out, the nigga jukebox is over there. So you will see the rappers you in about on the block. And we had like one of the number one dope spots from Nether Calumet before McGowan was sitting and drinking all that. You know, it wasn't all that dope all in the middle of the tray. It was dope everywhere, but the front of the tray was fucked up then with work and they were making money. So when I was seeing it, I had my partner, fuck that, I'm telling you. My nigga out the cuna on, I love him to deal with my nigga named Lee Lee. So Lee Lee was with that shit, he was about that life. He was another nigga, had two sisters, I think. So he was about that life, like shit. What it do, I was like, I know what I'm doing. I like, the matchboxes have one big with 20s in it. One small, the other matchbox with little pieces and sell them for 10. He like, fuck all that, cut to the chase. Sorry about cussing. Okay, so let me ask you this here. So when you was actually, I when you a finally did. To the butt, like it's the last motherfucker left. So when you actually got to a point where you was out there pitching, 